if they're not engaged, if they're not happy, if they're not continuing to want to come to work every day, we're not going to be successful. Hi, it's John Bernadovich, your host of the H Like a Boss podcast. Welcome to season three. I've embarked on a journey to get to know amazingly awesome HR and business professionals with the hope of finding what it takes to do HR like a boss. If you like the show, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. On today's show, I'm super excited to be joined by Kristen Pecorelli. Kristen is a a friend of a friend and someone we've been in touch with, myself and my firm, over the years. And super excited to have you on the HR Like a Boss podcast. Kristen, welcome. Thank you, John. I am super excited to be here and feel honored that I was on the list of HR Like Bosses. So thank you for for inviting me. How would you describe the purpose of human resources? Well, I really think you can have an HR person in all degrees. It's a big definition. And I think you have, you know, some HR people over here, some people, HR people over there. But what I feel a true HR person is a champion for the people. So I always like to pride myself on I am the liaison between ownership and upper management and all of the staff. So I'm that safe zone for people to come to. I don't want to be the scary HR person when I walk in, people get nervous. I want to be that face that they know and trust to be able to confide in me and to help them and to make sure that the company's doing the right thing and making sure they understand the company's decisions and how that affects the business and maybe why it is the way it is. Why do you think networking and human resources is so important? Well, I think you could become stagnant in your role and in your organization and networking and throwing ideas out there, um, hearing what other people are doing, making sure you're staying on top of trends. Um, I've always been in a generalist background, meaning I cover it all. So there, we don't here at Petites, we don't have, you know, a compensation department, a recruiting department, a benefits department. I oversee it all, compliance. So that's a lot of ground to cover. There's nobody else here who knows HR. Um, our ownership's very knowledgeable, but you know, do they really stay on top of when EEO one reporting needs to be done or OSHA logs need to be posted? No. So it's important to have those networks so you can throw stuff out there, remind each other, um, just knowing the industry and having that ability to reach out when you're not sure what you would do. Now we all have attorneys we can call, but sometimes it doesn't warrant that. You know, hey, have you ever run into this situation? What did you do? Um, or maybe something cutting edge that you're not aware of. Um, I know with recruiting, that's been a, a sticking point for a lot of organizations. Um, and if it wasn't for my networking, I would have never been in touch with LinkedIn Recruiter and how to go about that account. You know, a different way of going about recruiting. You're actually reaching out to the folks. And you're cold calling them, you know, in the old world of recruiting. Um, And I found some great managers that way. And if I wouldn't have had my network, I wouldn't have known of that process. Um, In addition, seminars, you know, staying active in SHRM um, and different other, you know, law firms that maybe offer continuing education. I think it's so important because if you're not staying on top of it, you know, maybe you are here in HR and you're going to fall there real quick because things are changing. Um, and as we all age, uh, we want to make sure we're not um, outdating ourselves with our approaches and the way the world is changing. One of the most interesting parts of my education and getting to know the, the, all things HR is this idea of engagement, having engaged an engaged workforce. And I'm curious why that matters so much to you. And if so, what, what are you doing about it to increase the level of engagement for your employees there at Petiti? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, engagement, I always like to phrase that as your, you know, what's the pulse of the organization? Where are people? Um, We could all sit here in corporate and think everything's great out there. You know, Petites is not a professional environment where everybody is in offices. So they're out on the floor. um, They're serving the customers. They're in the public. So what we do every year is an associate engagement survey. And that's something that during my um, internship at ERC, I learned a lot about. Um, So we send this survey out every year. I've been doing it since I think 2016. Um, And it's a bunch of questions. It's 48 questions, just with a whole bunch of different um, competencies that we're trying to gauge as to their um, pulse on it, like I said. 
and we compare those results year after year. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What are things we can change? What are things we can't change? And how do we communicate that to everybody so they understand? Um, a lot of things that are being done at the corporate level or ownership's level, uh, maybe the average cashier doesn't understand why. You know, why are we open certain hours or why are we not closed on, on certain days? Um, so what we do is we do that survey every year. Um, and my main thing to ownership in upper management is we can't do this survey and not respond. If we ask, we have to do something about it. So I said, this could be damaging if we put the survey out here and they give us all of these opinions and we do nothing about it. So year after year, we've been able to make incremental changes uh, to the organization. Some things are small, some things are big. Um, and you'd find you'd be surprised how many people are telling you things in the survey that you're like, why didn't they just tell me that, you know, when I was out there, or, you know, why didn't they just send us an email? But we don't understand either that, you know, maybe they aren't comfortable coming to people who seem higher up than them, but we're not, we're all on the same level. Um, so it's been able to identify a, a lot of things for us to change over the years. Um, so we're actually in the process um, going through each store's comments. We don't, it's anonymous, but we do know which location is providing the information. Um, and we go through and we talk to them and we explain to them, you know, we're able to change this. Um, you know, this year, a big change is we move, we used to have just vacation time and sick time. And we've seen it in the last three or four surveys can it just be paid time off? So we finally have changed it to paid time off. So that was a big win for this year. You know, so going around explaining things to them and then also explaining why we can't do certain things. Um, you know, they want more staff. Well, we're a very cyclical business where the spring we're heavy and right now we're cleaning and stocking shelves. So explaining to them, you know, the whole budget and the payroll percentage and, you know, how it all works to try to put it in layman's terms to them, um, I think is impactful where now they have an answer why it can't be. And we took the time to explain it to them and, you know, make them feel like they're part of the team that are making these decisions. So engagement's everything. Um, you know, associates are our biggest asset. If they're not engaged, if they're not happy, if they're not continuing to want to come to work every day, we're not going to be successful. So how would you describe someone that does HR like a boss? I think someone who does HR like a boss is willing to put themselves out there against the grain and do what's right for, for the, the workforce, to do what's right for the people you represent and to be able to make a difference. So, you know, I always say our ownership is amazing here. And I always say, you know, I, it's my job to let them know their risks. It's my job to let them know what people are saying, even if it is uncomfortable. Um, and it's my job to make sure that I'm the voice of the associates and the person who's going to go to bat for them. Um, as long as I, you know, if I, obviously I'm not going to go to bat for things I don't believe in, but to do the right thing. And I don't have to do that a lot here. Ownership always does do the right thing, but to be able to bring that to people who can make those decisions for individuals who don't feel comfortable going that high. So I'm that, that middle ground, um, safe zone, like I had said before, um, compassionate with empathy and understanding to be able to help them make a difference in, or to help make a difference in their everyday employment. So being a change maker, making a difference, going to bat for the people and, you know, being that nagging HR person when I need to be to make change happen. Fantastic job, Kristen. I really enjoyed having you on the show today. Well, thank you so much for having me, John, and um, best of luck on your venture in your book. Thank you for listening to the HR Like a Boss podcast. If it resonates with you, please leave a rating or review, or better yet, subscribe and share with a friend. Until next time, let's continue to aspire to do amazingly awesome HR. HR.